Hi guys, this is Steve, E6WZ. In this video, I'm going to walk through the software setup to use the latest version of the PST rotator program to use the new command function to drive multiple relays. This new feature is really great since instead of requiring a complex diode matrix to drive multiple external relays, now we can switch our receive and transmit arrays directly from the relay board no matter how many relay combinations in the field are needed. This program by YO3 DMU lets us use relay boards like this to toggle the relays using an azimuth compass display like this. We click a direction and the relays switch to activate that desired direction. Let's get started. First of all, open the PST program and navigate to Setup, Controller, and select DCU High Gain. We do this only so that later on we don't get a moving pointer on our compass display like a regular rotator. Next, navigate to Setup and toggle Relay Board with a check, and this will bring up the Relay Board dialog box. Select Setup on that Relay dialog box and select Relay Board. Then select the type of board you have from the drop-down list and toggle it on. Now, be aware you have to use one of these indicated boards. Other relay boards will likely not be compatible and won't work with the program. Now, a little bit about boards. I've used the 8 relay USB Denkove boards for many years and they work fine, but the USB setup can be glitchy and at times problematic. Sometimes they can get lost on a PC reboot, for example. I've made another video about how to set up the Denkove USB boards and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. I've now changed all of my relay boards to the KMtronic 8 relay web devices. These Ethernet boards are extremely easy to set up and remain available to any PC on the LAN just by knowing the IP address. This is much more versatile if you switch computers. Just key in the IP addy. So, to set up the KMtronic web board, for example, we navigate to Board Setup and select KMtronic 8 Relay Web, or whichever board you've decided to use. A dialog box pop pops up, and here is where you input the IP address that was created when you set up the board. Don't forget to save. When you purchase a board from KMtronic, it comes with instructions on how to change the IP address. Next, we select Setup, Automatic Control Setup, and then select the Azimuth tab on the Control Splash page. Now, this is what's changed from prior versions. Notice we now have either a Relay or a Command radio button. This is the game changer for eliminating the need for those complex diode matrices. First, you need to input the Azimuth direction ranges. This example is for my 9-circle receive array and I have 8 directions. You can set up whatever azimuth or directions you want here to suit your needs. Now, before this software update, we would just be activating one relay per direction. However, the 9-circle direction switching logic requires a combination of three relays per direction in the field. Well, of course, this requires the need for blocking diodes on shared relays. Here's a photo of the diode board. In fact, this is the diode matrix I required to switch my four-element triangular transmit array. There are only two relays at uh, each of the three parasitic elements, but the combination for six directions required a diode matrix like this. Here's the KiCad switch PCB I designed. Yeah, this is way too much work. Well now, none of this is needed. Open Setup. Commands Setup. This is the logic setup for my 9-circle receive array. Notice there are three relays at the 9-circle switch box in the field. I've connected them to Relay 1, Relay 2, and Relay 3 on the KMtronic board. So now it's pretty easy to just follow the required direction switching logic to tell the program on the command page which relays to activate for each direction. North, all three active. 
east, all off. Southeast, only relay three is active, and so on and so forth. On the automatic control setup page, make sure you toggle the commands radio button on. That's important. Also, make sure to activate automatic control. This is also important. You, the way to do it is you go to setup and click automatic control on. Also, make sure the azimuth radio button is selected on the automatic control page. To fine tune the appearance, you can navigate to view and toggle cardinal view if you don't want azimuth in degrees. You can also change the font here and the background color is changed here under skins. Click custom, then set colors, either compass or background, and change as desired. I prefer using custom color skins because I can make them more transparent and less bold. I prefer using compact mode one under view to minimize real estate use on the desktop. It's nice to have these small controllers to put wherever you want on your desktop. You may also rename the controller by going to Setup, Label. If you've got multiple RX receive arrays and transmit arrays, you can activate multiple instances. In my case, I have five instances activated, three for my receive arrays, one for my 160 meter transmit array, and a conventional controller for my Yagis. On the original, that is the first PST program instance you started, navigate to Help, Multiple Instances, and then you create them here. On this GUI that pops up, you create new, update, or delete instances. It's a good idea to add a shortcut to your desktop so you can find them easily. If you've got a need to switch antennas at your station, I encourage you to try out this fantastic program by Y03DMU. 73, this is Steve, V6WZ.